Okay, you guys, so I have such a cool episode today, and there's a reason I don't have no makeup on, because it is too hard to do nails and lay acrylic and look up while I'm laying acrylic into the camera. So, what we're doing today is we are going to do a set of nails, this set of nails, and I'm going to do a snake look on my face to go with the nails so I could tell the story to you guys. Like, it's so much, it, I'm praying that it's gonna be easier to do makeup and tell a story than to actually do nails and tell a story because that just didn't work. Episode one just wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. So we're gonna try again. And we're gonna talk about a pig farmer from Canada and the horrible things that he did because uh, that's why we're here to hear about horrible horrible things um so viewer discretion advised uh mature subject matter you know death i'm going to be inserting pictures it's going to be like the whole nine yards no child abuse no child well Not, not really, I don't know, not really, I mean, I don't know, just, just be advised, like, this is a horrible thing, it doesn't matter who it's done to, it's just horrible, and if you have a problem with, you know, hearing bad things that happen to people, then you should keep it going, because there's other videos and this is crime and claws so if you like watching nails get done and you like crime stories and i guess we're gonna try this makeup thing with cosplay uh this is my first time ever doing it so you guys are gonna get to see my first time ever doing cosplay makeup i think i'm gonna knock it off the park though but what else uh mm -hmm. If there's anything else, I'll just tell you in the middle. That works, right? Whatever. Let's get into it because I don't know what to say and I still get nervous. So, all I just do, it's like, it's these nails though, the nails. Like, these are some bad bitch nails. So, <laughs> okay. So, we're going to talk about a... Well, to understand where you're going, you have to see where you're coming from. So we are going to go all the way back to the beginning. Um, did I say that this was about a Canadian serial killer? If I didn't, I'm telling you now. It's about a Canadian serial killer. So to go back to the beginning, um, Robert Picton was born in 1949 and he was born to two pig farmers. It was known that these pig farmers were pretty dirty, pretty gross, pretty ooh, and they worried more about their animals than they did their kids. Wow, I used too much. Okay, so they worried more about their animals than they did their kids. Their kids ended up having to go to school. There was three kids. There was a the little sister, there was a little brother, and there was the oldest, which was uh, Robert Picton, and he was called Willie. So these kids would go to school and, you know, due to their living conditions being pretty gross and the house being really stinky. I don't know if you guys have ever been friends with pig farmers, but pig, pig poo, uh, pig poo is really, really disgusting. Like it doesn't come off in just like one shower, especially if you live on a pig farm, like it really just. It, if you've ever driven past a pig farm and you smell that smell, you know that anybody that lives on a pig farm is like marinating in that smell. So these poor kids had to go to school and... <laughs> okay, these poor kids had to go to school. Stop adding more, Sierra. Uh, I didn't grab a towel. <laughs> okay, so these poor kids had to go to school and smell horrible and they were not known to even have good hygiene anyways um so 
they would get picked on really, really bad at school. And it was to the point where they would skip school. Instead of getting on the bus, they would hurry up when their parents wasn't looking. They would run back in the house, hide under the bed, and just wait until the end of the school day because they didn't want to be at school. Kids picked on them. They were cruel to them. They just really, really cruel to these kids. And... I can imagine how rough it was because I went to a couple country schools and, you know, I was never one to pick on people, but I remember like how bad kids would get picked on at school. So, yeah, uh, so Robert grew up and, you know, when he turned 14, he ended up going and getting an apprenticeship at a pig a slaughterhouse. At a slaughterhouse and he did really really good at it he he knew like exactly how to cut the pigs up and you know the right cuts of meat he he was just really good at it and it was something that he flourished in oh wait take a take a step back though so when he was younger though okay he didn't like school he didn't do good in school he was known for being dim-witted and the only pet that he ever had was a cow. He had a cow. And so he went and he worked and he saved up his own money. And he went and he bought a cow from probably like a stock barn. I don't know. But he went and bought this cow and he spent all his time with this cow. He, he really, really loved this cow. It wasn't a joke. Like he really loved this cow. It was his pet. And actually, uh, people are cruel. So one documentary said something about them, um, like, said something about how, like, he would cut up animals and hide in their bodies. I just, I don't know. I think that's just rumors talking because people are just that cruel. And it probably got started in school. So you can imagine, like, the stupid, stupid stuff kids say. So... He comes home one day from school and he's go he goes out to the barn and he's looking for this cow and he doesn't see the cow. So he goes into his mom and he's like, "Hey, where's my cow?" And she's like, "Oh, well, go look in the slaughter barn." So poor little Robert goes out to the slaughter barn and what does he see? He sees his cow strung up ready for slaughter. Well, it's slaughtered, it's dead, but ready to be cut up for meat. This really, like, it just killed him inside. He's, he just realized that, you know, it, that's how life is. And, you know, when it's your time, it's your time. That You can't really kind of stay close or uh, get close to anything because it could go at any moment. So, yeah, at 14, um, he gets a job at a slaughterhouse, and he becomes an apprentice, and he does really, really good at it, and he works there all the way up until he's 18 years old. So, remember I said he had a little brother? Well, his little brother was named Dave, and Dave, when, Will, when Robert, Willie, was 18... Dave was 16, and on his 16th birthday, or around his 16th birthday, he got his driver's license, and he was driving, and on one of the back roads near their home, there was a boy walking, and Dave hit the boy. Dave freaked out, didn't know what to do, so he hurries up, and he goes home, and he tells his mom, like, hey, I just hit somebody. His mom told him, hold on, I'll take care of it. She told Willie to take the car into town to the mechanic's shop and get it fixed. And then she walked up the road to where this little boy was supposed to have been hit. Well, maybe not little boy. He was around the age of Dave, but that's still a 16-year-old child. So the boy was still alive, okay? So seeing that this boy is still alive... She takes him and rolls his body into the ditch where there's water. And this boy ends up drowning in just ditch water. 
So that's the type of woman their mom was. You know, Willie comes home, his pet's slaughtered. Dave goes running to mom and she kills the neighborhood boy. That's what he's raised. Like just, you know, like the, the right type of morals are just not there. The cleanliness, not there. The, the, the hygiene, not there. The animals, the home, the, the land, more important than anything else. Uh, just those are the morals. Just everything else is really more important than the real important things. So this is what he's learning. So he's 18 and he decides, you know, that he needs to quit his slaughterhouse job and he needs to come back home and just work on the farm and slaughter pigs at home because he's just more comfortable. It's more safe there. And I can imagine how cruel people were towards him. So around this time, you know, he started going to uh, like Vancouver, like the Lower East Side. And this is known for a lot. Why am I still rubbing this in? Sierra, stop. Okay, so at one point, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So Robert started hanging out down in Vancouver at the Lower East Side. This is known for where a lot of prostitutes and drug addicts are. It's literally known for being like one of the worst places in North America, you go there and you just see people strung out in the streets, prostitutes, like just everything that, you know, is wrong with this world today. So, so it's like literally one of the only places that he ends up fitting in, you know, because he's not really a savory person. He has bad hygiene. And a lot of addicts pretty much have bad hygiene too. Uh, and prostitutes, they don't really have many, um, you know, standards when it comes to who they hang out with. Well, around this time, for, you know, a while, prostitutes end up coming up missing. And the, it's not the chief of police in Canada. I can't remember what they call him. But the prime minister? No, that's somebody else. I don't know. The crown is like something there. Oh God, don't, don't get mad at me. I don't know all of, I don't know all of Canada's, <laughs> Canada's, uh, you know, I don't know all of their bureaucracy or whatever it is, their government. I don't know about Canada's government, that country up North that, you know, us Americans are so stupid. We barely know anything about it. I'm one of those stupid Americans. So anyways, though, so why is my face looking super shiny and this is not working out? Okay. Like, this is really making me mad. Okay. So he's hanging out there because, you know, it's someplace that he's comfortable and he's making friends. People are getting to know him and people tend to like kind of like him and stuff. His mom ends up getting sick and he takes care of her while she's sick, but she ends up, you know, he, he's helping her with her diet. He's helping her with a lot of other things. And one second. But his mom caught cancer, caught cancer, got cancer. And she ended up getting really sick and Robert took care of her and he actually had a pretty good relationship with her even though she was pretty messed up and did some really messed up things to him like he he was pretty close with his mother so she ends up passing away and for the first time ever you know Robert has freedom he can really do whatever he wants he inherits the farm along with his brother and his sister but his sister wants nothing to do with the farm. And the brother really doesn't do anything with it either. He just takes the bigger house on the main property while Robert takes the trailer. And the trailer is kind of back uh, out of sight a little bit. It's not really, it's not, it's not like out in the open. It's kind of back a ways for the privacy. So... 
Robert takes the trailer and Dave takes the main house and Robert, you know, finding this newfound freedom ends up going and finding, you know, females to kind of come back with them. And he's making real friendships. Like really, he's making real friendships. He's teaching these people, you know, these women how to slaughter animals. And I know that that sounds so crazy, but I can tell you now, like I come from um, a family that actually my uncles used to slaughter, work at a slaughterhouse. And I thought it was super fun working there. I didn't do any of the kill or be on the kill floor, but it was still, it was still okay fun. All right, so he's teaching these women, you know, the trade and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, you know, he starts wanting to really have that romantic relationship. And let me tell you, these people weren't really hanging around for him, like, to be, like, great friends with him or anything. They they really was around because he was offering them, like, drugs and money and stuff like that. They, they was getting stuff out of him. So... He starts wanting more out of these women. He wants relationships and stuff. <clears throat> so he ends up, you know, paying some to, you know, give him some. Well, one night it gets pretty serious because, like, most people that are, you know, not savory people. They're not usually happy with normal things. They kind of, they kind of graduate into worse and worse stuff. When you look at serial killers, they never started out crazy. They kind of worked their way up to the murders. They worked their, they kind of, I don't know how to explain it. So, this lighting is horrible, but, um, so he's working his way up to these murders, okay? Or should I have even told you that? Like, was that supposed to be a surprise? I don't know. But, so, he ends up getting a lady there named Wendy, and, you know, he's trying to get her to have sex with him, and he's already done bought her drugs, given her money, given her whatever, and, you know, he kind of tries to slip these handcuffs on her, and she wasn't having it. So, that pissed him off. And he tried to stab her. Well, so Wendy, she takes the knife, even with, like, handcuffed arms, takes the knife and stabs him. So, for every time he stabs her, she stabs him. But it's like, she wasn't stabbing him like he was stabbing her, right? Because he almost gutted her. And I mean, like, he slashed her torso, he slashed her face, her friends from the streets, they were like, they were talking about it, I watched it in the documentary, how, like, he literally nearly gutted her, and now she's, like, just stuck with scars for the rest of her life. So she runs, or at least that's what I hear in one story, then another story is, like, she called the cops or something, I don't know, but she runs and somehow finds somebody, one story says that she finds somebody to take her to the hospital, and they take her to the hospital, she tells them what happened, but the cops arrest him, but then, like, the prosecutor decides that, you know, her being a drug addict and a prostitute, that she just wasn't a reliable person and that it really just wasn't going to stick. That's nice. Like, sorry, <laughs> prostitutes are the most raped people in the world, but it's just not going to be believable. So let's just drop this and act like it never happened, right? Whatever. Just so you know, the Prime Minister, during this time, several prostitutes were coming up missing and people were calling for them to investigate it, but they wasn't having it. Nobody wanted to investigate these missing women. Nobody. The police said, like, what are you supposed to do? They'll get in the car with anybody. Like, they're probably just off to greener pastures, better drugs, like, up town Vancouver or you know they probably went to go see some family maybe they got sober who knows like they're just they're off doing better things whatever so basically because they were prostitutes and delinquents and drug addicts they wasn't worth looking into even though these women had children some of these women were good women 
they had children at home their parents were looking for them like people were really caring about these people and lost not knowing what to do so this is where this is about to get interesting because i have to do some eye makeup mm. i guess i could do my eyebrows let me do my eyebrows and i'll be right back i don't know why me like I should never be able why can't there be like an eyebrow fairy or something I've never been good at doing eyebrows so where was we oh yeah the cops never wanted to look for these prostitutes or anything else and people were you know reporting the missing and they didn't want to do anything so Robert had attacked Wendy and, you know, she had ended up at the hospital and they dropped the charges because, you know, they're like, eh, nobody's gonna really believe you and your testimony, you're not reliable, blah, 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 blah. You're a drug addict. Nobody's gonna want to hear from a drug addict. So it's like, okay, whatever. Well. Wow. So, Dave and Robert decide to sell part of the farm. They sell, like, the northern part of the farm or something. I don't know. But they sell part of the farm, right? And they're, like, they become millionaires. Millionaires. So, now, Robert has a bunch of money. And what does money equal? Money equals power, baby. Power. So now, Robert gets to go to Vancouver and pretty much just flash all this money. And they end up opening up this place called Good Times Piggy Palace or something. I don't know. But it was open under the uh, idea that it was going to be... Wow, this looks horrible on camera. I swear it does not look like this in real life. Like, what is this? What is that? Setting stuff on? Okay. So, they end up opening up this Good Times Piggy Palace. And this is a great place for everybody in town. And they were from Port Coquilla. Coquitlam, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that word. It kind of sounds Native American, um, but so they're like, okay, let's, um, let's open this place and we're going to party and live it up. The Hell's Angels were known for coming around, everybody in town, they even like did like kid events for like local baseball teams oh I'm sweating so they do all these like events and stuff and yeah so they're just living it up and Robert's known to bring you know prostitutes and stuff out there as like just entertainment for the hell's angels and you know like he was probably getting drugs and stuff from the hell's angels because he had a lot of money he was probably buying like pounds of stuff well robert was known to like tell his friends you know you know a good way to kill a heroin addict just just stick some windex in her syringe or like there was a couple different things that he said, you know, and it was kind of weird, but nobody thought twice, right? So, Robert ended up, uh, oh yeah, so this Good Times Piggy Palace was supposed to be for like service organizations and donations, like it was supposed to be like a benefit place, you know, but they're having Hell's Angels and like raves and prostitutes and stuff like that. And it was supposed to be meant to like work up money for community things, I think. And where did they have it? They had it at the slaughterhouse. And what did they serve on the menu? Slaughtered pig. So... 
So the cops end up wanting to shut this place down because they realize what it is and it's not it's not for a benefit or nonprofit organization. So they're like, let's shut this down. Robert and them, Robert and his brother Dave, don't shut it down. They don't shut it down. And this guy named Wilcox, he sees where, you know, women are coming in and some women are never to be seen again. So he's like, whoa, 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 what? And the whole time, you know, these women, they're getting comfortable with Robert because he was down in Vancouver hanging out with them. And some of them were calling him Uncle Willie, you know, like telling the other girls like, hey, go out here. He has massive amounts of money and drugs. Calling him Uncle Willie. And yeah, like, go see him. So some of these women are coming out and, you know, they're... They're going back home, and some aren't, and this Hillcox notices it. So, at some point in time, the cops get a, you know, and all this has already happened to Wendy, getting slashed and everything else, and during her, during what happened to her, they end up taking a pair of boots from Robert, and putting them into evidence, but because they never ended up, hold on one second. Okay, where was I? So, they during when Wendy got slashed and they took Robert to jail, they ended up uh, taking boots from Robert and they had blood splatters on them. But because they never ended up going to court with it, those boots sat in a locker for like seven years or something like that. Yeah. And little did they know they ended up having way more evidence on it than just Wendy slashing. But because they didn't want to really do their jobs, you know, hey, just let it go. Uh, so they end up executing a search warrant on this property, the Piggy Palace. And they're executing the search warrant for firearms. They got a tip from somebody that there was firearms in this place. And so they go to execute the search warrant and they end up finding a lot of other things. So they end up finding an inhaler that belongs to a woman that's missing. They end up finding syringes in a purse that, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So they back out. They're like, hey, let's not do this. Let's not do this right now. Uh, let's just, you know, go get a different search warrant. So they back out and... Willie is arrested, but he's released on bond, but not supposed to go back to that place. And so they end up getting another search warrant for, I don't know exactly what you would want to call it, but basically for the missing women. Uh, excuse me. So they go back and they're executing this search warrant and they end up finding a lady's body in a barrel. They see her like brains, they see just, you know, uh, rotted flesh, decomposed flesh. They find uh, body parts in a bag. They... They find uh, something called a Spanish fly aphrodisiac. They find pink fur lined handcuffs. They find uh, like a couple syringes with some blue fluid in it, which makes me wonder if it was Windex because he was telling that guy, you know, that uh, you could definitely kill a woman with Windex. So it just, it really makes me wonder. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, 
um, a 22 revolver, they find uh, a dildo, a black, like, spiked dildo, yeah, um, Oh, a garbage can with remains of Mona Wilson in it, um, or a garbage bag, I'm sorry. A garbage bag with remains of Mona Wilson. And then They found a bunch of like ammunition, guns, um, like a twenty two caliber. Night vision goggles. I mean, the list goes on and they end up finding more remains, more more items that belong to missing women, you know, with proof that it's to missing women, like purses and stuff like that. So they arrest Robert. They take him in and they're questioning him. And they're like, listen, we found, you know, remains. We found handcuffs, dildos. We found syringes. We found an inhaler that belonged to a woman you know, a brain that belonged to Mona. Uh, we found this stuff. And we have a friend of yours that's saying that, you know, you told him that you like to strangle, handcuff, strangle, gut women, kill them, and feed them to the pigs. Well, he wasn't really responding to this, um this line of questioning. He was not responding at all. So the cops decide that they're going to the cops decide that they're going to put him in a cell and they're going to put him in the cell with an undercover cop. And the undercover cop, if I remember right, I think the undercover cop acted like he was a murderer too, like he was in there for murder also, and that, um, like, if you would have seen this interview, this cop, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, I would have, I don't know, I don't, I think I would have known, he knew he was under surveillance, like, there was cameras up in the side of the, in the side of the, the cell, and, you know, like, he had to know. He had to know. So, they're like, all right. Like, you know, come on, dude. Well, okay. So, the undercover officer tells him, like, yeah, I'm here for murder, too. Blah, 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 blah. What are you in here for? And he tells them, like, for murdering prostitutes. And they told me, like, they're not going to give me no bail. And that guy's like, what? F that. Like, that's up to the judge. You don't get to do that. Da, da, da. <clears throat> Just acting all tough and stuff. Like, he knows what's up with the prison system. And, you know, Robert's like, yeah, they told me they wasn't going to give me no bail. They didn't even fingerprint me. And the guy's like, don't fucking tell them that. Don't tell them that they didn't fingerprint you. Keep that to yourself. Keep that to yourself. And then he's telling him, you know, like, the best way to get rid of a body is to drop it in the ocean. And Robert says, well, I already have a good way to get rid of bodies. And the guy's like, what? How? How would you get rid of the bodies? And Robert's like, well, there's this uh, meat 
packing plant and it, it gets rid of like remains of these animals and stuff. What is it called? Like a redistribution or whatever. It makes it makes uh it, it turns remains into other stuff, you know, and like, you know, you feed like he's already known to feeding it to pigs, the bodies to pigs, but now pretty much he's feeding them to all of Vancouver. This story broke the news that there was a chance that, you know, human remains had um, gotten into uh, Vancouver's meat supplies. And anybody who had bought pork from these certain places, you know, there's a chance that you could have ate remains and people were sick. They were calling in, wanting to know, like, what the hell is going on? <sighs> so, this undercover cop is getting all this information out of Robert. And meanwhile, the boots are sitting in, you know, they're sitting in storage and the cops end up finding them and testing them and they end up having the DNA of two more missing women on the boots. So they're like, oh my gosh, you know, the public is outraged. They're like, you guys could have prevented this a long time ago. You had those boots for seven years. We've been, we've been, uh, saying that these women were missing so, needless to say, they charged Robert with, so, in the beginning, he sat in jail for two murders, and then they ended up getting him for, like, four more. During the investigation, they ended up spending a couple million excavating the farm, and they ended up coming up with several bodies, but they couldn't prove who the bodies were because of the fact that they had been chopped up, insects, um, just a lot of different things had gotten to them. They, it had been known that they had been ground up, put in with pig, and fed to people. Um, so, you know, Robert Willie Picton goes on trial. On trial, he's dealing with 27 counts of murder. 27 counts of murder. But in the end, they don't all stick. Okay, so in January of 2006, Robert pled not guilty to 27 counts of murder. The judge or justice, the justice, ended up throwing out one of the counts. It took like a year. It took a year for them to figure out what evidence they was going to put in and what evidence they was going to leave out. And it took them, you know, a year to figure this out. And the justice ended up throwing out one of the counts. So, 26 counts of murder at this point. So after dismissing one of the counts, the judge ended up deciding to separate the counts. He wanted to put six charges in one, one trial and then 20 trial charges in another trial because he felt like it would overwhelm the jury and the, the, the jury, like the trial was already going to take two years or more and why do that? It would just confuse people. Just a million different excuses and one of the jurors ended up telling somebody at some point that she had already decided that Robert was not guilty because how could a man like him ever do something like this? So quiet, so nice, so just everything. And, you know, she just, she really didn't believe it. So the judge had a talk with her and he was like, hey, what the hell? Like, you already came up with this? Like... And we're not even into the trial yet. And you're saying that he's not guilty. And the juror ended up saying like, no, that's not true. I don't, I don't think that that's a lie. Somebody's lying on me. 
So they ended up letting that juror stay on the jury. Yeah. Okay. So January 22nd, 2007 was the first day of trial. And the jurors ended up getting to hear. Oh my goodness, that's not going to work. Okay, let's try this again. So. January 22nd was the first day of trial. Jurors got to hear what was going on. They were in for a treat. I want to at least pay respect to the six women we know Robert killed. Since I can't speak with the fishnet over my face, I want to take this time to show some respect to these women. In no specific order with the photos I've inserted, there is Andrea Josbury, who was 23 years old, and she was missing since June 2001. She grew up amid alcoholism, physical abuse, and mental illness. Her boyfriend introduced her to drugs, which brought her to the downtown Vancouver. There was Serena Abbott's way born in 1971. She never had a big chance at life, but she was always able to make the best of it. She was born with fetal alcohol syndrome, and ended up going down to Lower East Side, Vancouver. Frey was originally reported missing in Campbell River, but in fact disappeared in Vancouver. She was a known drug addict and sex trade worker in the downtown East Side area. Georgina Faith Pappen, born in 1964, she had eight siblings and was put into foster care early in life. She never had a chance. Mona Lee Wilson, was removed from First Nations Reserved in Alberta to find a life that ex that varied from extreme happiness to extreme misery. She was up and down with depression, ended up on drugs. Brenda Ann Wolf, born 1968, reported missing in 2000. Not a lot was known about Brenda, except for the fact that she was addicted to drugs and wanted to turn her life around. I just want to say that these were people that deserved to be looked for, and the others definitely deserve justice. I can't believe that the government would look over these people. Ooh. All right, so after the jury got to hear all the gory details and like, when I say that, you know, they found a lot of stuff, like, they were on that property for two years looking. And, like, I'm not joking. They literally found so much stuff. And definitely, you know, I've inserted pictures so that you'll get to see a lot of it. I mean, I'm gonna insert what it is and all that stuff. But, so the trial's over, everybody is deliberating, and the jury comes back. Is Robert Picton guilty for murder? Nope, not guilty. But they did. They did say he was guilty of six second degree murders. Six second degree murders, I guess. How do you say that? 
Six murders in the second degree. He was guilty of. So, after much consideration, the judge... The judge sentences him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Life in prison is only 25 years in Canada at the time this case happened. So Robert Pickton is still alive. He is still in prison. He wrote a book. He got his book out. One of the inmates snuck it out with him and it, it told his story and he still claims his innocence even though you know he was seen in the cell talking about how to get rid of these remains and that he was screwed and all this that and the third pretty much claiming that he was guilty he had friends stating that you know he was saying how to get rid of a prostitute just all this craziness. And now he's stating that he was guilt. He wasn't guilty. He was innocent. Boy, bye. You done did that. How, how would I do this? I want to like do something to my lips. Um, so what would I do though? Hmm. I know what I'll do. Okay. So what I don't understand is how his brother was there the whole time and never, never noticed anything like that's just crazy to me. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh huh. Don't judge. Okay. I hope I'm not asking. I go. Oh, oh my God. Oh my god. That did not turn out like scales, but it's not bad. I don't hate it. <sighs> you guys. So I just don't see how his brother really was there and, you know, was along for the ride for the piggy palace and the prostitutes are coming and just nobody, nobody notices, you know, these, his brother doesn't notice these prostitutes coming up missing. His brother already done killed somebody, kind of. I mean, you know, he not really, he just hit the kid, but did he stop his mom from rolling the guy into the ditch? No. Did he, like, did he ever go and tell anybody about it? No. Uh, Robert did. Robert was the one that told people, like, you know, hey, my mom, my mom did this. He went and told friends that, this was something that his mom did. Like, the Dave guy was not known for, you know, telling the truth. Like, he never, he never told anybody about it. So, I just, I don't know if I trust this guy or believe that he didn't have anything to do with it. I fully, 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 wholeheartedly believe that this guy definitely had something to do with it and that his brother took the fall his brother was even known for not being that smart. He was the one that was the smart one. You know, I just, I don't know. I think that, you know, Robert protected his little brother and now his brother moved away and I don't know what he does, but he might have even changed his name to be totally honest. I'm not totally sure, but... He might have changed his name. So. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna insert all the. The women that went missing. Around this time. B 
because Robert Robert admitted to killing 49 women when he was in the police lockup with the undercover cop. He he told the undercover cop that he had gotten sloppy and that, you know, he had killed 49 women and he really wanted to reach 50. And that he was really disappointed that he didn't reach 50. Now understand that, you know, uh, he got charged for those six that they split the trial up. And the six they went to trial for, you know, uh, they never went to trial for the other 20. That, those families are still waiting for justice. And it's never going to happen. Because... Canada's court doesn't want to deal with it. So, yeah. That's that's what you get. That's just nuts to me. But, hey. I guess they feel like they wasted enough resources on these prostitutes and that they really shouldn't have to... They don't owe them anything else, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't know. But they're not going to go to court for the other 20 women... And that's only counting 26 women with the ones that they did go to court for. And he's claiming that he killed 49. And the amount of bodies that they found on the, the farm, it, they couldn't really tell whether bodies were going together or not. They were finding them in pieces. They were finding whole bodies, just sludge in barrels and... They couldn't get DNA. It had been too long. And, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know what to think about this, you know, because I really feel like the Canadian government should definitely. Oh, I know I need uh, eyeliner. The Canadian government definitely owes, you know, owes Vancouver. Um some peace of mind people are still out there wondering if their mom's gonna come home or you know and this man has admitted to 49 of these so they have a reason to open this investigation up or at least charge him with the other 20 and make him go to court for it I just I don't get that I don't get it at all that they're really gonna just let those women lie in a cold grave you know somewhere you know 49 women, they only find so many. They only charge him with so many. Where are these other women at that he's claiming that he killed? Because at this point, they're probably either in somebody's stomach or they're in a cold, dark grave somewhere and nobody is ever going to be able to come looking for them because nobody has sent them to look for them. And that's just, that's sad. That's so sad. And that really just makes me sick that you know these people are in government and they're supposed to be there to protect us and yet they they don't want to do anything with the money that they tax us for you know and I mean hey I get it prostitutes aren't tax paying citizens but the rest of us are well I would be willing to yeah Tell me what you guys think down below. If you guys like stuff like this, I'm going to insert pictures with the nails and yeah, let me know what you guys think, how I did this time around, if this one was better than the first and have a great day. Be safe. Don't be out there trusting just anybody. Obviously, even people that seem slow and not very smart because they could be a lot smarter than you think. Have a great one. See you in a second with the final result.